morning headed to work uh this morning on the radio there were two instances of just some problematic black of sand stuff that i thought we could use as um teachable moments uh they had this thing called dd get in your business and it's where the dj lets you call in and participate you basically just get to share a secret that you can't really talk about in your real life so uh this black woman called in and told the story of how her brother um, got out of prison uh, he did 15 years and while he was there he got married and the woman that he got married to he sold a bunch of dreams as we all know tyrone is you know apt to do and when he got out of prison he he stayed with her he stayed married to her but she was not actually like really his love like she was secondary she she got pregnant by him when he got out um so they had a child together uh, I believe the woman was black that stayed by him. Well, he gets out and the love of his life or the woman that he really wants is a white woman. And he's basically having an affair on his wife who held him down those 15 years with this white woman who did get him a job of some sort or help him with a job connection. And he feels it's okay to bring his side chick around his daughter with the black woman and his sister you know and her family and she had to explain to him no I, you know basically i'm going to stand with my sister-in-law you can't bring your side chick around here you know basically i know you're a whore and that do you but you can't do you over here with me and in, in front of your daughter and she had to end up basically confirming to the wife, her sister-in-law, that her brother was in fact doing what the sister-in-law suspected, which was cheating with this white woman. And the brother never knew that she, you know, let her sister-in-law know. Really, the sister-in-law already knew, the, but the sister, you know, his sister had to confirm it. And she just hate that he put her in that kind of position with his degeneracy. And it, it so the teachable moment here is first of all don't be pick misha and date men that are locked up sure don't marry one that's locked up but y'all know there you you probably know in your life a, a black woman who stand stands by some man that's locked up uh and and if his state wherever he's at lets him get married while he's locked up you know and can have conjugal visits and all that you probably you probably know some women like that in real life that have no problem with saying that their boyfriend or husband is in prison. So that's the first thing. If you are in Blackistan, don't stoop that low. The second thing that's interesting to me is what I see in Blackistan and have seen my whole life is men cheating and the family knowing about it and the wife being none the wiser so basically everybody is in on this affair and knowing what the husband is doing the side chick is around the family uh everybody knows the side chick just as much as they know the wife and everybody treat the side chick you know like family sister they call a sister-in-law whatever uh and 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 the wife is none the wiser and then later on, you know, the wife finds out, basically everybody knew about the side chick but you. And you just feel, you know, kind of foolish. So I see that in Blackistan too. Or I, at least I saw that, you know, growing up. I don't know, um, I wanna say I don't know how much that's still a thing, but I get the impression it very much is. Um, I definitely think when I was married to Ben, well not I think, cause I saw the pictures of him out with his friends with his, and he was you know with his mistresses and his friends and their mistresses or wives so they it's like everybody knew but me you know and and now you know i found out some stuff about his brother and i'm thinking well shoot his brother was probably not 
the upstanding Christian man I thought he was, you know? So anyway, that's the first thing. The second thing is they had somebody call in to participate in this like kind of trivia thing they had. Before they start the trivia game, they ask the person questions about, you know, their personal life. And they happen to ask this woman, you know, are you in a relationship? Are you married? Uh, and she says, I am in a relationship. Uh, and, they, and then she, Didi asks, oh, okay, well, how long have you been together? Y'all, this Shaniqua says she's been on her man 17 years. 17. And of course, the DJs are like, y'all, like basically, y'all ain't married after 17 years. And she said, we, you know, common law, yeah, but we, it's not official. Like, I don't have a paperwork. And I, I told y'all before, I've seen this plenty of times when I worked in the funeral industry, you know, you, you common law married, uh, he, if he got insurance, you not the beneficiary and you really not the next of kin. The, the mama, uh, the kids, uh, this is some other people's gonna come before you because you never that that little piece of paper that they say marriage is nothing but a piece of paper that piece of paper turns out to be very important if that person is on life support and somebody got to make a decision to pull a plug or not yeah you you don't have that power because you're not his wife so she said basically and we got two kids together and it, again we get back to this idea in Blackistan that it's somehow okay to have children out of wedlock children are a forever thing it's not just you know uh we you know we were intimate for 17 years and we went our separate ways you have created a, a, a sentient being that's going to be on this earth probably longer than you it, to me once you get to the point of bringing somebody's um child into the world if they are good enough to have a child by then they need to be good enough to marry. And if you are opening up your womb to a man who's not good enough to have a child by, my question is, why are you opening up your womb to him? Why are you having unprotected sex with him? That part I don't get. So the the, the DJs, I think, you know, Dee Dee asked her, well, do you want to get married or... Why, like basically what's what's popping i hate when people ask women that because for the most part women aren't the ones to do the asking about marriage you know i know there's some pygmies nowadays that'll get on their knees and ask a man you know to marry them but that's not how it generally goes but they're basically asking well you know do you want to marry him so she does like a what, you know, what is that chick that's with Jim Jones that's been with him forever and a day and now she's saying, oh, I don't even want to get married now. And you know it's a lie. You're just basically telling yourself this to make you feel better about the fact that you know he ain't going to ask, you know. And she's like, no, you know, I, I, I got some, we got some issues to work out. And of course, the, the DJ is like, y'all been together 17 years. I got two kids. Like, y'all ain't worked out y'all issues by now. You know, it's just ridiculous, y'all. So, I, you know, I, I also want to tie that back into this live that Samantha Cooker did yesterday where she played a video, I guess, from maybe TikTok or something. And it was this Shaniqua. Uh, to me, she was a very immature, young-minded Shaniqua. Uh, her mind, she, she seemed like she had the mentality of a 16-year-old. And she's having a child out of wedlock by a man who I came in in the middle of the lie so I, I hadn't heard the message text message or something that he had sent her but basically he made it very clear that he does not like her he hates her and he does not want her to have the child that she's pregnant with from him and that he does not plan on participating in this child's life in any way and she goes through with the pregnancy and she's now you know looks like she's about to burst and so she gets to get, decides to get online to share this with the world and everybody's telling her abort mission, you know, and she's 
not going to and she insists that the child does not need a father that the child has her that she came from a two-parent family and her father will happily step in and be a father figure to this child and of course you know ladies that are hi i already know what the problems are with this uh <laughs> The words don't even begin. I don't even have enough words for the arrogance of women who feel like they can do it on their own. That you don't need a man to raise a child. Uh, that you don't need a two-parent family to raise a child. Um, and, and that's boy or girl. You, Especially when this girl has come from a two-parent family. It, it always kills me. People who had the privilege of having uh, you know a two parent family they grow up and then think I you know I can do this by myself and, and they fail miserably because they don't know what they're doing you can't do it by yourself you are not enough you know you need help I know you think you're superwoman I know you think you're superman but a child needs both parents you know period so just some lessons we can learn from black women and their mistakes um what they do and don't allow as far as kind of degeneracy what you allow in your household i was happy about that first black woman who told her brother don't bring your mistresses around my house and my family and your daughter you know because a lot of black stan won't stand up to black men and their degeneracy what happens is the black family um, will stand behind Tyrone and his degeneracy. And I think that's why you have so much degeneracy in Blackistan because no matter what Tyrone does, the family supports him. You know, he, he can spin the narrative in, in whatever kind of way that his family is gonna support him no matter what. And I was glad to see a sister say no not not today you know it's a new day we're we're not doing this and you know it the the brother had brought up the fact that i guess at some point in his incarceration his sister was hooking him up with different girls and giving him different girls numbers and so here's a little news flash people that are locked up like to have a bunch of different numbers or contacts especially men they know how how to hustle when it comes to commissary and, and whatnot being locked up but they want to have a bunch of different girls that they're writing so they have a bunch of different women putting money on their books so they have a, a, a lot of money for commissary and whatnot well she said you know i did that when i was younger when i didn't know better she's married now she has her own children her own household and she knows now you know the detriment of her ways but a lot of us grew up knowing not to throw salt in a cheating you know older relatives game you know if you see uh, an older relative with one spouse one day or one romantic interest one day and you see them with a different romantic interest the next day you know not to say well where is in name of pre you know you, you just you're raised you know with this degeneracy being okay and learning how to and learning how to be, I'm sorry, I'm distracted by this accident. Um, learn, learning basically how to embrace their degeneracy and play along with it. I can't think of the name I'm trying to say right now. It's a word you use in substance abuse. Uh, you're basically helping people get their drugs or helping them you know do something they shouldn't be doing i want to say codependent but that's not it you're i can't think of the word but yeah you're like basically you're you're in in, in something you know them in this degeneracy and then you just grow up knowing how you know thinking oh these men cheat and you have to go along with the program of their cheating and that's just the way it is and it's like I, I just was glad that she put her foot down and the rest of the women's it's like y'all have such a long way to go 
and ladies, we have to learn in Blackistan, everybody's not gonna go there. Everybody's not gonna be able to go with you. Everybody's not gonna see the same problems with stuff that you see. Having kids out of wedlock by different men, uh, they're not gonna see the problem with that, you know? And it, it's sad. I, I saw something, I, I don't know if I was watching a YouTube video or listening to the radio or something, you know, you hear some black woman talk about, you know, not needing as much child support or something as the judge felt like she needed. And basically she was identifying with her ex or her baby's father or whatever more than she was with giving her kids the absolute best that she could give them. So like, let's say he's paying $30 a week in child support, but his income is increased. And the judge is telling her, well, he can now afford $75 a week in child support. And she's like, no, he can just keep being a 30. We good, it's, you know, it, it don't basically child care. It, it don't cost that much to take care of my kid. Like, you know, just selling your kids short. And they, you know, and again, I call these BMI, these are black male identified women. They're gonna identify with the pain and struggle or identity or whatever of a Tyrone before they're ever gonna identify with you as a black woman. And I know plenty of, my, in fact, most of the black women we all know are more like that than they are gonna identify with you as a woman. When they talk about issues in the black community, they're gonna center a black man. At, you know, when they talk about police brutality or whatever it is they feel like are the issues in the black community, you can rest assured that most of those issues are bringing up are something that are Tyrone centered. Um, I did enjoy the live with you ladies last night discussing the tender bar. It was awesome. And I, you know, I, I thank Selfish Love for, for being there and to, to discuss it. And as I listen to it, and I, I'm still listening to the video this morning, but as I listen to it, I think about the fact that we didn't discuss or there was a whole nother element to it that just didn't get looked at a lot about hypergamy and interracial dating uh, and you know having biracial kids and teaching them kind of what what to do you know especially if this is all new to you you know so there there was like a to me I feel like we could dig deeper into that movie looking at the Sydney character and Jr. because Sydney you know was a biracial woman from the type of you know relationship that we are all here for that we hope to get you know this basically a hypergamous relationship with uh this interracial you know so i stay i say still go in and watch the tinder bar because i feel like that could be explored you know a lot of us want to get married interracially and I don't think any of us that are thinking about having children. Now, I'm not one of those thinking about having children, but you don't want to raise a Sydney as far as kind of her sociopathy or her narcissistic um, tendencies. I, you know, in one sense, she acted very much like, you know, a typical white girl, so to speak. And in another sense, she acted like a typical white girl, not in a good sense if that makes any sense. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, I'm at the office. I will holler at y'all later. Um, okay, make it a great day.